Hello friends and welcome to my channel where we mainly talk about thrillers on Thursdays and first I just wanted to say please try and ignore the monstrosity that is in the background. Like everybody else I have some goals for 2019 and an infomercial sucked me in. I thought that this full body workout machine was gonna be compact. That's how it was advertised. And now that I think about it, all of the elderly people who were for some reason using this on the beach, I think they had it outside so that you couldn't realize how fucking huge it is when it's actually in proportion to a room. That's literally the only place it can go. The only other option is the kitchen, bathroom, or my bedroom, and I don't wanna wake up looking at that thing. I'm just gonna scoot over here and then we can pretend it's not there. But I have not done a book haul in about, I wanna say five, six months. I could be wrong, but I know it's been quite a while and it's especially been a while since I've done a pretty big book haul. And to me, anything over like five, six books at a time is big. I think I have like 12 today. Some are from some really cool thrift book shops that I discovered. Some I received for Christmas and then I have a couple book of the month books. So I'm going to go through all of that, but I'm just, this is the most excited I've been for a book haul since I can remember. I just don't acquire that many books and I tend to donate a lot. So for me, this is big. So the first book we have is Chemistry. It's by Wake Wang. And I heard about this from my friend Scoobles Reads. She's talking about it at BookNet Fest. I was on the mental health panel with her and she was talking about how this is about a girl who's struggling during her graduate studies. I'm guessing by the title, she's going to graduate school for chemistry. And not that I want to relive graduate school, but there aren't a lot of books about that topic and it says over the next two years this winningly flawed disarmingly insightful heroine learns the formulas and equations for a different kind of chemistry one in which the reactions can't be quantified so i'm very excited about this i think she's dealing with a lot mental health wise throughout graduate school and i believe she's sort of watching her boyfriend who can who is seemingly just you know skipping to and fro easily through it so really excited about this one and i just really trust your taste in books. Next we have a horror novel I'm really looking forward to. I'm assuming most of you guys probably know what the Year of Horror book club is at this point. I'm gonna try to not say Year of Horror book club, but I'm worried that's how it's gonna come across. But, but it's a book club I've started where we are gonna read one horrifying book, and by horrifying it could be a horror novel like this one I'm about to show you, or it could just be about a horrifying topic. So for January we're reading We Need to Talk About Kevin, which isn't horror, but it's about a very horrifying topic, which is a child murderer. I'll link the video down below where I talk about the book club. I already announced the January pick, and in that I already announced the February book club pick, which is Pen Pal. The origination of Pen Pal is really interesting because it started off as a bunch of creepypasta stories on Reddit, if you know what that is, and then I think it's also been made into videos, into audio recordings, all these different formats, and now it has been made into a novel. And it's about a man unraveling his childhood and some things he can't remember. And I I love the synopsis for this. It says, if you've ever stayed in the woods just a little too long after dark, if you've ever had the feeling that someone or something was trying to hurt you, if you remember the first friend you ever made and how strong that bond was, then Pen Pal is a story that you won't soon forget despite how you might try. So this one just sounds horrifying and I can't wait until February to start this one. So this sounds like wonderful, creepy fun and I can't wait until February to start this one. Now I'm gonna go through the book of the month books and I've decided I'm I'm gonna do book of the month a little bit differently. You guys know I'm a book of the month affiliate. I always have a link down below if you wanna get one of these for just $5. But from now on, I'm not gonna show every single book of the month book. I'm just gonna show the ones that I think personally are interesting. So the first one I'm interested in is a true psychological thriller, and, and this is called The Silent Patient, and it has amazing reviews. When I saw the title, I was like, uh, it kinda looks like every other thriller, but the reviews for this were really good. And it's about a woman who one day her husband comes home, and she either shoots him or stabs him five times, one of those, and then after that, she never speaks again. And then you have a psychotherapist therapist. I wonder if there'll be a little bit of romance maybe. I don't know. And at this point I'm assuming she's either in jail or in a psych ward and he's trying to get her to speak to try and figure out what happened. And even though I read a lot of thrillers, it's been a while since I've read an actual kind of stereotypical psychological thriller that has a psychologist and all that. So really excited about that one. The next one I'm very interested in because of some of my background and that is a non 
nonfiction, which I don't read a ton of nonfiction, but this is called Made by Stephanie Land. And this is about a single mom. Again, it's nonfiction. She's a single mom trying to make some money. And so she decides to become a maid and cleans people's houses. And it's sort of the things she learns throughout all of that. I used to be a maid, although I was a maid for a hotel, not for people's homes. But I definitely have some pretty messed up stories from that, and especially around weird things I saw. Also just on how unfortunately people treat you sometimes when you are a maid, but can't wait to get into this one. And then we have The Night Tiger by Yangzi Chu. And I have to say, I Googled when I was trying to see how to pronounce her name. I was looking it up on YouTube and I came across an interview with her. And can I just say, I don't know what it is about her, but I could watch her and listen to her speak for hours. I'm just entranced watching her. But this book is literally magical. I, I believe it has some magical elements. This takes place in Malaysia and a I don't know if it's a young girl or a woman, is a dressmaker to try and pay off her mother's debts. Sorry I was wrong. She's an apprentice dressmaker moonlighting as a dance hall girl to help pay off her mother's debts. But then one day, one of her dance partners, I believe it's she leaves behind like a finger? I'm not sure and it sets off a weird chain of events but it just seems like a really magical weird beautiful story and I can't think of anything that sounds similar to this one so this is my final book of the month pick. Again if you want to you don't have to you can use my link down below to get one of these for five bucks. Next we have a genre that I don't read a lot of and that is fantasy slash sci-fi and I've been trying to get into more sort of hardcore fantasy sci-fi although I don't know if this would be considered to be that. But whenever I look up fantasy sci-fi authors, the one author that keeps popping up that I personally could see myself really liking is Ursula Le Guin. So Ursula Le Guin is an incredibly popular female fantasy and sci-fi author and I was at a used bookshop and came across the Gifts, which is the first book in a series, I believe. I don't know too much about this, but it takes place in the Uplands, which is an isolated place where several farming families that possess various gifts feud and fight for dominance. And I think it's a teen novel and it's told from the point of view of a boy and girl who have different gifts. I'll put the name of the bookshop here, but it's in Birmingham, Alabama, and they have absolutely everything there. There's no place that makes me happier than a big, crazy used bookshop. And the man who worked there was super helpful. So again, if you're ever in Birmingham, Alabama, I will put the title of the bookstore here. <laughs> okay, next. I don't know if I'm actually gonna read this. This was like 50 cents, I think, and I saw this at a different used bookshop. <laughs> But, but this is Garden of Shadows by B.C. Andrews. And unfortunately, I have to, I, I don't know if unfortunately this is gonna focus, but this is one of those old books where it's see-through and then you have the family. Please tell me I was not one of the only ones who read V.C. Andrews at far too young of an age. If you're not familiar with her, she wrote the infamous Flowers in the Attic. And the way I could describe her books is they're all family epic sagas that go over many years. And they're kind of like really dark, but also good lifetime movies. But really, I mean dark. They deal with really, really messed up shit. I read one of her books. I think it was called Darkest Hours when I was way too young. I picked it up at someone's like house when they were having a yard sale. And my parents, I don't think, really understood what I was reading. And I remember like reading the phrase, like the hardness against her. And I was like, what's hard, his abs? But anyway, this is the prequel to Flowers in the Attic. So I figure even though I haven't read Flowers in the Attic, this will still make sense to me. And I don't know, I just really, I really remember being absorbed by that book. So please again, tell me if you've read any V.C. Andrews. I know a lot of people have very negative opinions about her, but it's a guilty pleasure. Next, we have another older book from a used bookshop. I'm blanking on what it's called, but I'll look it up. But this bookshop was in Savannah and it was wonderful and they had a really good horror section. And this is Second Child by John Saul. And I think this is from the early 90s, late 80s. And I posted a picture of this on Instagram and a couple of you guys said that you've read John Saul books and think they're very terrifying that you maybe read them when you were growing up. He's a very popular suspense thriller horror novelist. He wrote Suffer the Children, if you've heard of that one. I think that came out in the late 70s. There's something about this cover and the blurb just really drew me in. Like the first blurb says, Secret Cove, ruggedly beautiful beautiful and remote, bordered by dark woods and deserted beaches. And this is apparently about a place where, I'm picturing New England, maybe it's not, but some rich people's houses during the summer, their summer homes, and a hundred years ago, a girl killed herself. And, and then years later, I think this is told, and then in present day, well, 
present day early 90s, a 13 year old girl and her family move in and terrifying things occur. I don't know about you guys, but where I've been living, it has been raining nonstop and something about just like a rainy cove. I feel like I wanna curl up on my really uncomfortable rock hard couch and read this. And as a side note, I realized I haven't been reading as much lately in this apartment since I moved in because I have nowhere comfortable to read. I don't recommend ordering a couch off of walmart.com. I, I don't like reading in my bed because I'm a bad sleeper and they say if you sleep terribly, you really should only get in your bed when you're actually trying to sleep. That's one thing I need to try and figure out this year. Then we have Desperate Characters by Paula Fox. This is a quick one. I've heard of Paula Fox a lot. Well, that's not really true. <laughs> I've heard of her a lot, but that's only from rereading the first chapter of You. <laughs> so if Desperate Characters by Paula Fox also sounds a little familiar to you and you maybe can't figure out why, that's because this is the book that Joe recommends to Beck in the first chapter of You, or it's what he doesn't necessarily recommend to her. Maybe it's what she goes into the bookstore and buys. Either way, it's mentioned in the first chapter and something about the fact that this is the book that Joe feels the need to mention and actually recommend, or maybe not recommend, but he feels it's a good book. I felt the need to pick it up, which I realize doesn't make sense because Joe is not real. This just means that Caroline Kepton has recommended this book, but either way, I'm happy with that and I'm curious. That was very long-winded, but this takes place in New York City. A couple is together and she goes to feed a feral cat or something like that and it scratches her and might have rabies and it sets off a chain of events. I'm terrified of cats so this is my version of a horror novel. Now we have a giant book I also got from a used bookshop which is good because this book was so expensive at non-thrift stores and that is Sleeping Beauties by Owen King and Stephen King. This is huge so if I don't enjoy this I will not be pleased. But in in this world something has happened where women go into kind of cocoon-like states and if you wake them up they what does it say they become feral and spectacularly violent and however one woman the mysterious Evie is immune to this blessing or curse of the sleeping disease again I don't actually know too many people who have read or reviewed this so so this just better be worth the massive length I'm not going in any order I'm just grabbing this stuff oh I forgot I put this in this pile my family knows me very well and they got me this for Christmas I figured I'd show it even though it's not technically a book but I just still can't wait to go through this and it is the world's most Haunted Places, Creepy, Ghostly, and Notorious Spots by Life Magazine. And all of the images are just incredibly beautiful. You know what, I think I've been to those catacombs. No, I think those in Paris, I haven't been there. I remember going to catacombs when I was about 12 years old. I think it might've been in Prague and just being very entranced. Look at this, the Katie doll will not be pleased that someone else was featured, but again, can't wait to go through this. And it weirdly like feels very nice. Then we have another non-book, but we have the only graphic novel I've picked up recently, and I've already read this one and really enjoyed it, and that is The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And I've noticed some people saying that they don't like The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix because they're like, why would you just remake something like the TV show to make it darker? People are complaining that everything feels like it just needs to be remade darker, and I get what people are saying, but it's not a remake of the TV show just to be darker for the sake of being darker. It's based off of this graphic novel, which is very dark. I really like the graphic novel. I'm sure if you like the show, you would like this. They're both different enough that I think you could read or watch one or the other first and still have a good time and be surprised. I don't think it matters which you watch or read first. I liked season one, but at the same time, if it goes in the same vein of Riverdale where I could not even get through season two, I thought it was so awful. I just hope that doesn't happen to Sabrina because even though I didn't think season one was fantastic, I thought it was fun. And then the final book is one I've been meaning to pick up for a while and that is Perfect Days by Rafael Montes. I have been wanting this one for a long time because it really reminds me of You by Caroline Kepnes. Apparently Rafael Montes is a very popular author from Brazil and this is his English language debut. This is told from the point of view of a male stalker. He's a twisted young medical student who kidnaps the girl of his dreams and embarks on a dark and delirious road trip across Brazil. I hope you guys enjoyed that book haul. Please let me know if you've read any of these books and which ones you're most excited for me to review and I can kind of put those up front to maybe check out first. I also wanted to just say a big thank you for all of you guys who are participating in the Year of Horror Book Club. I have been really overwhelmed but in a good way at how many people have joined. I made a discord group where we can chat although you definitely don't have to join it to be part of the book club and I think that's up to like 
300 people and I just am completely shocked but I love seeing you guys interact with each other whether it be there or on Twitter or on Instagram but I hope you guys have a wonderful week I'm gonna go waste away on my maxi climber and I will see you guys next Thursday bye